So this is a case about tick-borne illness being transferred in utero. And I really love the Infecto lab test because it's able, it's really, we've really been able to see what is real clinically in comparison to what is real via laboratory diagnosis in a way that I haven't been able to see before. And um, I just have one case of this in the lab, but I think that it's, it's, it's telling and I can't wait to do more cases like this with the lab. So let's see if I can scroll down here now. So, so regarding um, maternal transmission of tick-borne illness, there's not much research on this, right? And this case does strongly suggest maternal transmission, which is, which is why I'm very happy with this lab because I wouldn't have been able to, to have a case where I, could, where I could be able to demonstrate something like this with a lab. So according to the CDC, untreated Lyme disease during pregnancy can lead to infection of the placenta, but spread from mother to fetus is, is possible, but rare. So we see this in our clinic very often, okay? So we see people, we see families where the mother or the father has the diagnosis of tick-borne illness and, and the kids do as well. But we're not, we think, we always thought, yes, it was transmitted in utero. And there's a little bit of research that shows, but we couldn't really prove it in the labs. So remember, this is just an N of one, so I'm not calling it proof, but I feel like it's on the way. If I can keep showing this in the labs, I'll feel, I'll feel more like we can, we can prove that. So, so know that our population is unusual. We only see chronically ill people. And because of that, our population is skewed to this group of people. And that's likely why we see such a high incidence of fam familial spread clinically. The population is growing. We see this more and more than we did 10 years ago. Our clinic is filled with people who have complex chronic illness and is filled with families who have complex chronic illness, which is why I find this case so interesting. Um, so in this group of patients with more severe systems, that symptoms, we see a higher incidence of transmission in their offspring. So the CDC is just reporting on a population, on the, on the general, the, the population at large. That's not who comes to see us. So I want to get um, straight to the punch with respect to the labs. So I'm going to talk about the family, and then we're going to go straight to the lab results. Okay, so, so a brief history. We'll talk about symptomology after. So a mother, 48-year-old white female, she was bit by a tick six or more years ago, six to eight years ago. She has mold exposure in the house that was five years ago and she kept that, that family kept getting re-exposed to mold over five years. There's a daughter, she's six, no tick bite known. And of course she had mold exposure since birth because the family kept getting mold exposure over the past five years. Son, he's five, no known tick bite mold exposure since birth. And the father, he's 52, no known tick bite. And of course, mold exposure. So they come to me with a diagnosis of only mycotoxin and mold illness. And um, a doctor had diagnosed them with that and had tried to treat them. Nothing happened. They didn't, they, they, they got a little better here and there and they did keep getting re-exposed to mold, which is a reason why. You know, they didn't, they, they didn't improve, but there was not a, not a diagnosis of tick-borne illness. Nobody diagnosed them with that. So they come to me um, wanting treatment for mycotoxins and mold and, and by their, uh, their, their symptoms, I think that there's something else going on as well as the mold and mycotoxin illness. And of course, I'm thinking it's tick-borne illness based on their symptoms, which we'll get into after. So Talking about the father, so just the Infecto lab diagnosis. So um, I don't have the labs shown up here for all three of them because it's just too much paper and I want, I want to show you this side by side. So I've tried to put things on the slides together as much as possible. So in his Infecto lab test, there's no tick-borne illness diagnosed at all, none, okay? But he does have some cytomegalovirus interfering gamma borderline, which means he's fighting it off of a little bit, it's there, 
That's all he has. And of course, there's mycotoxins and severe mold IgG um, allergens, which are elevated. It's diagnosed by another lab. So here I'm gonna talk about the mother, the daughter and the son. There's a lot of writing on this slide, um, but it's important that it's all on the same slide so you can compare and see the sharing of the diagnoses. Okay, so the mother, she's got the Zalvi Infecto lab now. So she's got Lyme, Bartonella, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, all positive in interferon gamma. Okay, so meaning that she's, these infections are active in her right now. Next, let's talk about the daughter. Remember, she's just six. So take a look at the, the infections that she has in common with the mother. No tick bite known, okay? Lyme, Bartonella, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus. So we see the exact same infections here. She's got interferon gamma and interleukin-2, both positive. So when I see that, I'm thinking that she's in the process of getting her immune system under control as evidenced by the interleukin-2, right? These are from central memory T cells, which means that her body is beginning to, to tap down the, the inflammatory response. And now we don't know if this is because of, of, a, of, a, of a child's strong immune system. We don't have enough data on that. Or is it that we're finding her right in that time between transmission and active infection resolution? I don't know. I'd like to know, but we don't have enough data on that. That's, that's a whole nother point in itself. But the, the main point, the take home message here is that the mother and the daughter both have the same infections in common. The mother has a history of a tick bite, the daughter doesn't, okay? So now the son, he has Bartonella, interleukin-2 positive, Lyme, borderline interleukin-2 and interferon gamma, borderline, Ehrlichia, interferon gamma and interleukin-2 borderline, Epstein-Barr virus, interleukin-2 borderline, and cytomegalovirus, interleukin-2 borderline. So the difference I see here is that he's, he's got Ehrlichia, and his mother and sister don't. Perhaps they did in the past, and, and that's not apparent in their immune system now with either interferon gamma and, and interleukin-2, or maybe he, had, he did have a tick bite, which was transmitted or like you to him, I, I don't know. So it's possible he had a tick bite that uh, the family isn't aware of. But according to them, there was no, there was no tick bite, but sometimes they happen, right, when, when people don't know. So he appears to have a lot that's borderline that his mother and sister are currently fighting. And like his sister, it's likely that his, his immune system has, has fought off a lot of this. Um, but most recently he's been dealing with Bartonella and according to his labs, they're it's just resolving. Let me get to the next slide here. Ooh, just one sec. So that was the piece that I, I wanted you all to see regarding how in this test, this is a clear case of, of the likelihood, the suggestion of tick-borne illness being transmitted in utero. We see, we see the same infections all around from mother to children with some exceptions here and there. And, and I, I wouldn't have been able to see this as, as clearly on other labs. Right. Because here we're looking at the immune system, looking at the interferon gamma and the interleukin-2 and what is active right now. So I want to get into, um, into the clinical picture of, of these patients of mine. Um, I finished talking about the lab, but I thought it would be interesting for you to hear about their symptomology. So the clinical, the clinical picture of the mother, she's got this pain trifecta, shooting, burning, and aching pain, in her myalgia and also in the joints. So you, typically this is due to Bartonella, mold and Lyme, that combination. And sure enough, on Infectolab, the Bartonella was, was raging and, and so was the Lyme. So, so her, her, her symptomology did correlate with, um, with what I found on the Infectolab labs here. And brain fog, Lyme and mold, more than Bartonella would typically cause brain fog and um, you know that her line was raging as well on the lab. Extreme fatigue, 
likely from cytomegalovirus. Now her cytomegalovirus was through the roof. I forgot to mention this and so was her daughter's, like through the roof. And so that, that was another way to, to, or sorry, that's another infection to think about um, transmission. So familiarly, obviously that does happen, but, but to see how their immune systems handle it in a similar way was very interesting. Um, and of course, the fatigue could be due to mold and, and tick-borne illness combination. Um, so they're all consistent. All her symptoms are consistent with Lyme, Bartonella, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, all being active. But now I'm able to, with this lab, I'm able to tease all that out better than before. Oops, sorry, guys. I think I just lost the screen. Just a moment. OK. So one minute here. Sorry about that, some technical difficulties. Okay, so now, now about the daughter. So her symptoms were constipation, could be due to tick-borne illness, mold, mycotoxins, and cytomegalovirus. Um, they're new patients to me, so we're also doing a GI panel. Could be due to parasites or other, other infections in the gut. Um, the pruritus, likely due to mast cell activation sy syndrome or mold. The fatigue is minor in her, could be due to tick-borne illness, mold, and cyt cytomegalovirus. So her symptoms are not as severe as her mother's. And this is consistent with the finding of, of no interleukin-2 in the mother while she has significant interleukin-2. So this is another piece of the lab I really like. So looking at the interleukin-2, we can see that the infections are beginning to resolve. And, and likewise, her symptoms are not as bad now than, than, than previous to, to her being diagnosed. And sorry, guys. Keep having technical difficulties in just another moment. Okay, so on to the son. So he had fits of rage. That's his primary, primary symptom. In fact, there's no pain, there's no fatigue, it's all rage. And that is consistent with Bartonella. Now, his Bartonella is now interleukin 2 positive. That suggests that he's resolving this infection. And the interesting piece is that before he came to me, he was having fits of rage about seven to eight times a day, and now they're three times a day. So that would make sense that you know, the parents were telling me when he was having fits seven to eight times a day several months ago, um, it's very it's very different to, to now with the, with the fits three times a day. So if you think several months ago, likely his, his interferon gamma was positive. And now that he's got interleukin-2, it's likely that his fits of rage are, are decreased because of that, because there is a, there's some healing happening. There's some resolution of this infection happening. But really, really important to note is, is that the behavior pattern was likely established by the Bartonella. So it's a classic Bartonella um, mental piece. However, when, when, when a neurological or mental or physiological piece is established by any infection and that infection resolves, the, the body knows that pattern and, and another infection or, or toxicant can come in and, and carry on that pattern. So, so very similar to what Dr. Gordon was saying with his case that the tick-borne infection was resolved, but there's a pattern there that's still carried. And do we continue on? With, with antibiotic therapy or, or any therapy to resolve the infection, or do we work on, on, on regenerative medicine, right? So pieces, pieces to, to modulate the, the, the damage that had been done by the infections or the toxicants we're talking about. So, so with the Bartonella here, um, I'm seeing that he's still having Bartonella fits of rage. They're less than previously. And I'm seeing, seeing the interleukin-2 positive, meaning he's, he's pretty much resolved this now. So why is he still having those fits? Do I need to treat for Bartonella? No, I'm not going to treat for Bartonella very much, or at least, not, at least not very aggressively, because this lab is showing me that it's mostly resolved now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat for, for the other infections that I've diagnosed, with him, diagnosed him with and, and other toxicants I've diagnosed him with um, to, to undo the patterns that the Bartonella created. So thank you guys. That's 
that's my piece and and it's um you know seems pretty pretty clear to me from this lab that there was transmission from from mother to children in utero in utero because she did get that tick bite um before she had her children in and apparently her children did not have tick bites. Okay. So thank you. I'm, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and um, that's it, thanks. Thank you.